Daryl Issa shreds Cohen, gives him a label no lawyer wants to receive by Amy Moreno for truthfeednews.com. There's no denying the fact that President Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, is a bum. Cohen, who worked for President Trump for years, was secretly recording their conversations, which were confiscated by the FBI during a surprise raid. Representative Daryl Issa put it best when he called Cohen a turncoat lawyer. Many experts agree that Cohen will likely lose his license to practice law for his actions. Former Daily, uh, from the Daily Caller, excuse me, uh, California GOP rep Daryl Issa hammered turncoat lawyer Michael Cohen on Saturday while acknowledging that if uh, news unfolds that President Trump did lie about knowing about the infamous 2016 Trump Tower meeting, nobody's going to be surprised. Issa, during a Saturday morning appearance with Fox News host Neil Cavuto, called Cohen a turncoat lawyer, a lawyer who deserves to be disbarred for a number of his actions, including recording his uh, client clandestinely, make, uh, makes a much uh, better story than businessman makes America great again. The California congressman also downplayed the possibility that the president is lying. But what if he's proven to be a liar, Congressman asked uh, Cavuto. Uh, if he's proven to have not told the whole truth about the fact that campaigns uh, look for dirt, and if someone offers it, you listen to them, nobody's going to be surprised. It is, uh, there are some things in politics that you just take for granted. Uh, you don't think that uh, you don't think this uh, has uh, any long-term impact as the Fox uh, News host. Uh, he wouldn't be the first politician or president for that matter to maybe just me misrepresent things. Businessmen uh, listen to almost everyone who might be helpful and by the way, they make pragmatic decisions about how to make bad stories go away, replied Issa. Neil Cavuto, Daryl Issa, we take for granted that POTUS was do, uh, going to make America great again financially. Uh, okay, let's take a quick listen here. It's worthy of media attention. Um, and I'm not saying the media ignored the strong GDP data, but let's say it was not as favored a subject as, as was the, the Cohen tapes and allegations. What do you make of all that? Well, you know, it may be the greatest backhanded compliment of all time, we take for granted that President Trump was going to make America great again financially. He was going to be somebody who came in with the answers to make America competitive, to make our exports grow, our imports shrink, and our industry come back. So uh, the fact that he's done it, uh, to a certain extent, is appreciated by his base, discounted by the other side, and a, a turncoat lawyer, a lawyer who deserves to be disbarred for a number of his actions, including, uh, you know, recording his client uh, clandestinely, uh, makes a much better story than businessman makes America great again. Well, let me ask you about that then. Regardless of the charges back and forth here, are you worried that, that, that the win that should normally be at the Republicans' back and this, this president's back? Uh, could be imperiled by this ongoing investigation of the widening issue of whether the, the president um, uh, on a call talking about paying off a former Playboy model or whatever gets in the way of all of that, gets in the way of the messaging you think could be a winner for Republicans. Well, I think if you're looking for some sort of an epiphany by the voter that didn't vote for President Trump because they thought social issues and the Obama uh, sort of solutions to everything was more important than jobs for themselves and their children, then, you know, you're not going to get that no matter what. But what if, if he's, he's proven to be a liar, Congressman? Well, if he's proven to have not told the, uh, the whole truth about the fact that campaigns look for dirt, and if someone offers it, you listen to them, uh, nobody's going to be surprised. There are some things in politics that you just take for granted. So you don't think uh, this has any, any long-term impact? They wouldn't be the first politician yeah. or president, for that matter, to maybe misrepresent things. That, and he gets over it. Well, you know, businessmen listen, uh, listen to almost everyone that might be helpful. Yeah. And by the way, they make pragmatic decisions about how to make bad stories go away. 
you know in business a problem is something money won't solve and if if you've got somebody making an allegation true or false suing you for something so true or false you often make a pragmatic decision make it go away and get back to the the important things this president keeps getting back to the important things of making our economy work again making the world safer again making our military strong and able to keep us out of war these are the issues that no matter how many times people try to distract the president he does return to and his cabinet returns to so you know will the voters in just a few months return to the question of are you better off than you were two years ago and by the way so much better off that it is you know it is you know the forty percent fifty percent better growth an economy that's not just hitting on all cylinders but is the envy of the world I think the voters are going to look at that. Winning issue. And you could be right. You could be right. So, Congressman, let me um, get a read from you. I mean, a lot of people know sure. that you're going to retire and all of that soon, but <clears throat> excuse me. You're also one of the most successful businessmen who has ever come uh, to the House of Representatives. I believe you're the richest congressman uh, because of that success. Yeah, so currently, although I'm a little too poor to be in the cabinet, so I'm in <laughs> that middle ground. <laughs> well, maybe not at the rate you're. Uh, so, but let me get a, a sense then. When you talk to business leaders and those who have succeeded, and, and, and they talk about all this, and they like all this, but they worry about trade, you tell them what? I tell them that if, if in fact, what's being done is getting us to deals that will <laughs> allow our country to su succeed, prosper, and compete, then these are necessary transitions. And that includes the farmers you were talking about a little while ago and so on. You know, President Trump got a major commitment from Europe to buy up an awful lot of that inventory that China's trying not to buy. Uh, I think everyone sees that there will be disruption, but in the long run, we had to get rid of the barriers to our opportunity, or we had to raise our barriers, and the president has made it clear he'll raise those barriers unless others lower theirs. But, you know, he challenged Europe to eliminate all their tariffs, and we'd eliminate all ours between us and Europe. That's a major recognition that all he wants is fairness, well, this not whatever, tariffs. Whatever you think about this, is it your sense, Carl, if this were to drag on, for many months, all bets are off, right? Oh, I, look, if, uh, if people get to where they no longer are talking, uh, no longer negotiating, no longer meeting and finding ways to work together, yes, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. But during these weeks and months, no president has been more willing to meet meetings that others wouldn't even have considered. He's already done more in, in less than two years than most presidents do in eight. All right. Well... As you can see, the uh, Democrats don't care about that, that's for sure. They're going to be pounding this uh, as if Trump uh, knew, and uh, they're going to be pounding another story because of the Cohen tapes. They never give up. They're just looking to uh, destroy the country as usual. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and again, thank you so much for watching.